In this video, we're gonna build a checkout flow for a single product. In this case, we're gonna sell a box of chocolates from a candy store that I've already set up inside of Stripe. We're gonna use a tool from our documentation called the Integration Builder. This will allow us to download some example code and in just a couple minutes, we'll be up and running with a checkout integration. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by going into the account settings section of my dashboard and looking at the account details under my business settings. I wanna confirm that my business information is correct and that what customers will see is accurate. So I'll look at both my account details and the public details, confirming the support email, support phone number, and statement descriptors. I'll also take a look at the brand settings Notice that I've already set an icon, a logo, and some brand colors and accents that will appear in checkout when customers are going through this payment flow. Finally, I wanna confirm that customer email settings are up to date as expected. So I will toggle on successful payments and refunds and scroll down to save. That way customers will receive emails when they purchase my products. Finally, we'll head over to the product section and note that we've already created this product listing for a dark chocolate collection. So we're gonna sell a dozen pieces of our most popular 48V signature chocolate. This is the price ID that we'll use when creating the checkout session later. To get started quickly on our app, we're gonna use Stripe's Integration Builder. This is a tool in the docs that'll give us a fully working example of a Stripe checkout integration. You can get to the integration builder by going to the docs at stripe.com slash docs, clicking on payments, and then selecting accept a payment online. And for this example, we'll use HTML on the front end and Python on the back end. You'll also wanna confirm that you're logged in here and that that'll show in the top right. The integration builder allows us to define a product we wanna sell. So we'll pick the chocolate, dark chocolate collection from the drop-down list and you'll see the price ID populated in a list of line items on the right. That's the price ID for this product. We'll come back to that a little later. Now we can download the code for the full app and this will include both our API key and the price ID for the product that we've already selected. All right, let's take a look at what's in this download. So we have a public directory with a CS file and three HTML files. The customer will be redirected to either the success or the cancel page, depending on whether they made a purchase. And our checkout HTML page is where the customer is gonna preview their order. Let's take a look at this. We can see some HTML to display a product, but it's showing an example product, not ours. So we wanna update the URL for this image and also the product information so that it reflects our dark chocolate collection that we're gonna sell. Right below, the product div, we can see a submit button that when clicked, will call this server route, create checkout session. Before we take a look at the server, let's take a quick look at requirements.txt to see what dependencies we're gonna install here. So there's a, a quite a few here that we use for all samples, but the ones that matter most are Stripe and Flask. So those are the two key dependencies that we need to make sure are installed for this example. Over in server.py, you'll notice that our API key was pre-configured. That's because we were logged in when we downloaded the example quick start. Our server has just one route at the moment. The one we saw referenced in checkout.html, and that is for creating a checkout session. So it's gonna make a call to the Stripe API to create this object, which controls what the customer will see on the payment and in their payment flow. There's a lot of different parameters that you can include in a checkout session create call. This is where you're gonna configure all the different things that the customer might see when they're going through that payment flow. We're gonna keep it very simple to start and we're just passing in some required parameters. The first of these is an array of line items. We'll use this to define the list of items that a customer is gonna buy. And in this case, we're just passing a single line item and it's the, the integration builder has already populated the array with a hash containing a price parameter set to the price ID for our chocolates and a quantity of one. We also need to set the mode parameter on checkout session. This tells checkout what kind of payment we're gonna make. This is set to payment here because the customer is gonna make a one-time purchase, but mode could also be set to something else if we had a different pricing model. For instance, if we wanted to charge customers later or we wanted to set up recurring payments. 
Now, the last thing we need to specify is the URLs to which Stripe will redirect our customer from the checkout page. This is going to be success and cancel pages. We saw those HTML documents referenced earlier. Now, once the checkout session has been created, we're going to return a response that tells the browser to redirect to this newly created session URL. Let's open up the terminal here and we'll start by installing dependencies with pip3 install r and passing in that requirements.txt file that has all of our dependencies listed. Next, we'll export an environment variable called flask underscore app, pointing it at our server.py file. That is the entry point for our Flask app. Then we'll say Python 3-m flask run dash port 4242 so that we can fire up the server and run that on localhost 4242. We can try things out by visiting our order page at localhost 4242 slash checkout.html. When we click on the checkout button here, we're taken to Stripe checkout and I can see my product information and I can enter a test card and some test card details to complete the purchase. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to head over to the documentation and take a look at the other videos in this series to learn more about what you can do with Stripe Checkout. See you in the next one.